Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil, this is Samantha. Hey guys, welcome back. So excited to have you here. Glad that you're with us for another Yes reaction. This is our third one from Yes. The first one that we did was Owner of a Lonely Heart. The second one was Roundabout. And yes. the third one is Close to the Edge. And this is, I believe, the self-titled track of the same name in the album. And you guys were saying that we've got to get to this one. This is yes. a big one. You guys were also saying, I don't know if you're ready for this one. <laughs> People in the comments were saying they're not ready for that. You gotta gotta get them into something else, which I can kind of understand because it's an 18 and a half minute song. Yeah, but you guys were saying that it's totally worth it. So, and why have we arrived at this, Samantha? Because it's a request from Barry. So thank you, Barry, for that request. Barry was uh, saying, you guys, you know, this is a long one, but you're gonna appreciate it. He yes. was the one hyping up the song as much as you guys were in those comments. And yeah. the second one that we did was requests from Mark. So the yeah. requests for yes Lots are coming in. Yeah. And that's not surprising to me because when I did that poll that time about who would you listen to, if you had to pick one group or artist for the rest of your life, which group would that be? And a lot of people commented on it being yes. And I was so surprised because I'd never heard of the band name. Before. Yeah. And we were like, wow, who is this? They're so popular. Yeah. And uh, so Owner of a Lonely Heart, the second one, first one that we did, sorry, yeah. was uh, I think from the 1980s. And you said that wasn't so much the sound that Yes had in the 70s, which was more of Roundabout. So I think this is kind of around the same time period as Roundabout and should be similar to the sound that is authentic to Yes, as you guys were alluding to. Cool. But I've liked both songs. The first one, the video was kind of weird. <laughs> With all the little animals and the creepy crawlers. But the second one was a great uh you know, tr experience I would say yeah for sure I've really enjoyed both of them even the first one like I said the, you said the video was a little bit strange but I thought the song was really cool agreed so before we get started we just got a quick pop quiz question for you as we've been adding in with a lot of our videos and that yes. question is yes the group has notoriety with New York City's Madison Square Garden why is that if you stick around we'll tell you if you know the answer drop it in the comments yes. now and uh, other than that you have anything to add, Sam? No, I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. Your thoughts on Yes so far? I've really liked them so far. Like I said, the first one, I thought the video was a little bit kind of confusing, but the song itself I really liked, and I thought Roundabout was a really cool experience. All right. We got enough uh, music to get through here, so we might as well get it going. You ready? Let's dive on in. Are you ready? Let's roll. see if we're ready <laughs> yes i am ready for yes are you ready yes <clears throat> sounds like birds
So, <laughs> I mean, it says close to the edge here on the title, right? And that says the solid time of change, total mass retain. I get up, I get up. And it feels like we're just doing a bunch of different songs. Yeah, there's definitely different pieces to this. And not that I think that the song itself sounds like what I'm about to say, but the kind of con- concept of it almost reminds me a little bit of what we did with Moody Blues about how like it was like almost little pieces mm-hmm. within one. Yeah, I think uh, I said that in the last one that we did roundabout yeah. that it reminded me of the Moody Blues. I would say like for me personally, and you can obviously have your own insights and that's your first one is that it reminds you of that. I don't particularly think this one sounds as much like the Moody Blues from what we heard because we haven't heard as much. Um, we've heard a few songs now and we haven't reacted to all of them. We had one of our subscribers and supporters sent us a few uh, Moody Blues, Blues to listen to yes. to get a feel for them a little bit more. Then we got more reactions coming from Moody Blues. But definitely from the Knights in White Satin one, I don't see the similarities because there wasn't as many breaks like like I feel like we're literally having a break and going into a new song. In yeah. this. And that's why I'm looking at this like one, two, three. That's what I feel like they've kind of broken it up. I think the the idea might be that the close to the edge is like the theme. And then the, the solid time of change, total master chain, all these are going to be little pieces of that grander theme, but they're all little parts of, or sections within that grander idea. Yeah. So it's hard to, to pick up on a lot of the lyrics, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe we should have had a lyric, the lyrics up with us, um, and to get a bit of better feel for it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it is, like I said, sections in this. So that's my initial thought on in the first six minutes is that it feels like multiple songs all together. Yeah. And when I say that it reminds me of the Moody Blues, I don't mean the sound at all. Like, I don't think it sounds like them. I was just more so meaning that like in Moody Blues and that, um, album that we did, it was, I know we didn't listen to all of it, but there was like different ideas within the same thing, like part one, like it was almost like morning, going into daytime, going into afternoon, going after evening. And that's kind of what this reminds me of is like different sounds all flowing into each one. So little mini, like you said, little mini songs that also total to like a big compilation. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just kind of like what that reminded me of, but I don't really know like if that's true or not. So yeah, I have some thoughts on it, but I don't, you know, on the sound of this and what I'm getting from it and what's standing out, but I don't want to keep talking for too long because we got an 18 minute track. Yeah. So I want to keep the breaks short here. Uh, you know, obviously six minutes it didn't really feel like that though, because there's been so many different changes in the music itself. Yeah. But, uh, anything else quickly that you want to add? The only other thing I'll say is I'm noticing like certain pieces of it. I'm finding it easier to find a groove with and others I'm finding it harder. Okay. So I would say that like half of it so far, I've like liked the groove and half of it. I'm kind of like having trouble with a little bit, okay. but yeah. Got it. Oh, 
If you want to know what progressive rock is, this is it. <laughs> I feel like we're coming to the end of I get up, I get down. Yeah. And this is the th third piece of the third section. I th Maybe there might be four sections if we get to one more. Yeah, that's what um, it seems like. So to let you guys know, I'm sorry if it like we're not, I, I don't know what you're doing. I'm not paying attention to you. But I know for me, I'm not really having much facial reactions here. <laughs> so for a reaction video, you guys are probably like, you're going to react to something here, dude? <laughs> and... Um, I'll explain why that is. It's because I'm really trying my, I think when I first got into this song, I was trying to listen too hard. Like I was almost like not experiencing just, I was trying to listen, not experience. Okay. I don't think that with that song, that that's what this song is supposed to feel like or represent or be. I think that this song is supposed to be an experience all the way through of different emotions or feelings uh you're on this ride right and that's why midway through there I, I was saying if you want a definition of progressive rock that's what this is because i think that's what it's supposed to represent i feel like this would be something that you may have been taking like lsd or something like that you know and listen and some peds a little bit. some yeah. some uh personal enhancement listening we'll call pels <laughs> um to kind of highlight some of that journey but I, I think in that middle portion there that we just completed i get up i get down that was kind of i don't know how to explain it it's hard because it's very very different than anything i've ever heard um but i feel like like I said, you're going through some energy in like the first couple pieces. And now in this, I get up, I get down portion, we're entering into this reflection portion. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where we're going to go in the last portion, but if I had to guess, it's going to be something related to positive messaging or a positive outlook on things. Maybe the first two representing more of like, 
some conflict feelings. So anyways, uh, coming back to my point, as I was saying that I'm not reacting as much, it's because I'm really, I was really trying in the beginning to listen, but I was trying to listen too much. And so I just tried to like zone out and experience it for the rest of this. Yeah. And I think that's allowing me to understand what it's supposed to be like more from an experience standpoint. And yeah. maybe, like I said, if you were in the seventies and <laughs> in that lifestyle in right that mindset, yeah. what this would have sounded like. Yeah. And I was sure. trying to put myself in that position. True. So sorry about the rant, but that's my thoughts about this thus far. Yeah. Listening to this more, my interpretation is that it almost feels like some sort of like spiritual journey that you're supposed to go through. I'm taking, I mean, I think I'm like jamming out and like, you know, getting, um, like reacting, we will say a little bit more, but for me, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just find a groove and like see how the music makes me feel. Yeah. So that's what I was saying is that I, I think I was trying to do that in yeah. the beginning to try to find a rhythm or a groove or something. And it, I don't think that's for me anyways, what I'm seeing now is what it's supposed to represent that you're, it's supposed to be like something that you're listening to. It's supposed to be something you're experiencing and feeling. So highlighting what you just talked about of maybe a spiritual journey or something. Yeah. Yes, obviously we're listening to it, you know, yeah. when you talk in the definition of mm -hmm. it. But I think I was trying to listen too much and not experience enough is what I was saying. That groove or that rhythm looking for it. I don't, that's why I was like, when we're cutting from one song to the next, I was like not getting it at first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say that I'm not trying, I'm not like looking for rhythm. I'm more so just like feeling the music, like vibing with the music and however it makes me feel is kind of how I'm flowing with it. And how do you feel thus far? Um, I've had a feel to a bunch of different emotions. Like I feel like the first, the first one was, I think I was like you said, I didn't really know what to expect. And it was a little bit chaotic. The second one, I think I was getting more like happy, like, um, more like vibey kind of feels. Mm -hmm. And then this one that we just went through was more of like a slow like melodic reflective kind of piece, like you said, and a little bit, not necessarily sad, but just like more low key. Yeah. And then I don't know where we're going next. So yeah, I won't continue on much longer cause I want to get back into it. But, uh, my standout musically, uh, bass is obviously super prominent and very intricate, uh, keys as well. Keyboard sound. Um, I can't remember who's playing what here, but, uh, I, you know, those are two things that really stood out to me. Uh, the keyboard usage, I don't know, you know, obviously we mentioned in the last one that we did, there was a lot of variation and technicalities that were seemingly being used. My, it blows my mind that this is all analog, not being digitized at all. That's crazy. Um, but especially, like I said, from the keyboard standpoint, and then, uh, I feel like the bass is a big driver in this one, um, through and through. It seems like each one that we go through, that's very standout. Yeah. I also feel like the vocal is like very relaxing, like, yeah, regardless agreed. of what's going on with the music. I feel like the, I think, I think that's almost too why I can just kind of like yeah. vibe out. Cause I feel like the vocal is very like relaxing. I think that's John Anderson. And I think the bass player is Chris Squire, if I remember correctly. Anyways, you ready? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Let's keep going.
Well, I was close to the edge. So, what were your thoughts, Samantha? This is a whole transcendent experience for me. I kind of had a hard time with the lyrics. Like, they seemed very abstract to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, the voice and the vocal, I think, was very relaxing. and Kind of putting me, like, in this trance. Um, But specifically what they were talking about, I'm not entirely sure. So... I don't know if you picked up anything, but if you guys want to let us know in those comments, maybe what they were kind of encompassing in the song. Um, I definitely thought it was a really unique journey and like something that's... Well, before you get into that, uh, you can can tell us about our journey in a second. (laughs) Um, I just wanted to make mention that they had mentioned in the... Make mention they had mentioned in the comments that maybe it's not the best idea to try to understand Yes's lyrics. Okay. And my sense maybe with that, in line with that is... There seemed like nice, pleasant lyrics. Mm-hmm. Like the what, what he was saying was kind of poetry. Yeah, like down by the river and around the corner. Yeah. yeah. So I think maybe it's just built in a way that the lyrics are supposed to represent individually to each person differently. And okay, you so can, your own interpretation. You can apply the lyrics as you wish. Okay. Um, in that's kind of an open ended, and maybe that's what people mean by saying, you know, don't try to interpret Yes's lyrics too much or the meaning of the song too much. Try okay. to experience it. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's kind of what I was trying to do, like I said before, right? Just try to feel the music and then see what kind of emotions it bring and or brought to me. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, it was kind of like a journey, right? So I feel like for me, like you definitely saw the different pieces of the song, right? The four pieces. Mm -hmm. And I would say I vibed with some a little bit more than others. Um, I personally really liked the second piece and the fourth piece. I thought the second piece would have had a good groove and like a good flow. I liked the third piece too, but like I said before, it's just a little bit more laid back and like relaxed. And then the fourth piece, I really liked how they had all that like high energy kind of like I don't know if it was like a keyboard or synthesizer or what they were using but all of that kind of like more electronic kind of sound I thought was really cool Mm -hmm. and there was also like an organ in there yeah I think he was going off on the keys that's that's what I was saying like they were pretty prominent for me throughout and then there was almost that organ kind of sound in there one time that was like almost giving me like half wedding half funeral half haunted house vibes it was weird I guess it's thirds not halves but and the uh, third portion Hmm? In the third portion, you were saying? In between the third and the fourth. Okay. Like, it, there was this part where it was almost like a heavy organ sound, and it was almost like altar music mm. mixed with, like, something kind of creepy. So I was like, I don't really know where we're going here. And then out of nowhere, they came heavy with those keys and the, like, kind of noise. And I was like, whoa. Um, but my brain was just like, pew, 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 pew. Yeah. It's cool, though. Very Definitely intricate. very creative. Yeah, unique. very intricate, very creative, very unique, very diverse in the sound, which was, was resemblant in uh, Roundabout. Yeah. As well. Agreed. Right? Um, I think something that's crazy, though, to think of is that, like, they're creating something like this, like, in the 70s, right? Like, you know, like you had said, there wasn't a ton of, like, digitized music and stuff like that back yeah. then. So it's, like, to come up with something and record something like this is, like, so impressive, especially for that time period. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was musicianship, right? They mm-hmm. put a lot of effort into this, uh, clearly. Yes. And, you know, that's why probably people say you got to listen to this and, and experience it, quote, unquote. Mm-hmm. You know, for I, I would agree, I think, in terms of the sections, um, I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. It was almost a little bit too, like, high pitch frequency for me. Okay. Um, and maybe that would change if I listened to it again, now that I know the rest of the song. Yeah. Uh, I really like the rest of it, though, like the other three portions of it. Um, I know, like you said, the second and the fourth, I think those were more of a like rhythm section and I throughout in general, I would say I felt a lot of funk to it. Mm -hmm. Um, there was like a funky feel to it. And, uh, I think that was because the bass was so prominent as I mentioned before, but I did like the third section because it gave me a break for a second because you said like there's so much overload of what's going on. Yeah, This is the third section was nice to just kind of like have a little bit more of a relaxed vibe. Yeah, but also to gather your thoughts mm-hmm, and true. take in the first two pieces. Yeah. And what the hell they're trying to talk about. <laughs> or more importantly, maybe what they mean to you. Yeah. Or where your mindset is, where your where your space is mentally at that moment and what's going on in your life, we'll say. And then I think that my favorite part was the end. Um, which is, you know, cool because they went through all that. They built towards the end and it wasn't a letdown in any way. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really, really enjoyed the end of it. Um 
I thought it had uh, just a great rhythm. Like you said, the key usage in there was just fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, And uh, you had mentioned his vocal as well. Very uh, serenading. And, (laughs) you know, just like you said, relaxing, Mm -hmm. right? I think overlooked, though, maybe we overlooked it throughout. I definitely didn't overlook it in the last section so much, but their harmony usage is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, The way they use that kind of spatial sensing between the the lead vocal and the harmonizing, I think was worked really well within each dynamic of all these different instruments going on. So, you know, all in all summarize, summarizing, it's a lot to take in, right? It's 18 minutes on your first listen, uh, not customary sound for us in general, still getting a feel for this kind of music, yeah. Uh, you know, in, in our journey as a whole. So we probably missed a ton, <laughs> yeah. right? And, uh, but I think generally speaking, this is supposed to be, like I said, an experience of something. And I think it's great that we're doing the reaction channel in this magnitude. Because I don't think nowadays you could listen to this. Like, And what I mean by that is most people do things. And I, I can't remember who I was talking to about this. One of our subscribers uh, who had emailed us and uh, supported the channel. And so I was saying that I feel like it's very hard for people to listen to music. And, and nowadays because we have to be doing something. Yeah. So it's like. You got to be, you know, working and listening to music, working out and listening to music, driving, and driving listening and, music. and listening to music, cleaning, and this, listening to music. This is an example of some, I think, similar to some of the other progressive rock that we've got into. But I think this is the most prominent example of something you couldn't do that with. You can't do it. No. And I think that, like you said, it's rare for people in a group or just individual people to just sit down and do absolutely nothing, but 100 percent dedicate their attention to listening. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's my feelings on it. It was an experience. As mm-hmm. I said, I hopefully you guys enjoyed our experience. Like I said, I apologize if you're like waiting for us to smile or jump out of our chairs or <laughs> do something, but I don't think that's possible with this song if you want to listen to it properly. So that's just my opinion. But, um, you know, uh, I know maybe you were reacting a little bit more. I can't tell, but yeah. uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Nonetheless, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about the song. Anything that we did miss, any insights you want to add, any really key components in the song. Maybe if we go back and listen to it, uh, we can check out and, uh, hopefully you enjoyed our reaction, Barry, and, uh, getting, in, getting us to check this one out. Um, we got to give them an answer now if they yes. suck around this long past all the rambling and the music. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to give them an answer to the pop quiz question, feel free. Yeah. So in regards to Madison Square Garden and, you know, what um, kind of accolade they held to that, it was that in the 1970s, they held the most performances at that venue. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, uh, again, I wouldn't have expected that from a group named Yes, but yeah. they are clearly uh, something that has found its niche in history. And, yeah, and, really cool. Yeah. So anyways, 50 years later, yeah, literally, <laughs> we got around to it, Wild. checked out this one. It was well worth it to experience something new. If this is your first time on the channel, hit the notification bell and the subscription button right now. And uh, hopefully you come back tomorrow. Check out our next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.